I was surprised to read uh, in media yesterday, in mainstream media yesterday, uh, that Brooke Van Velden, now Minister in the Cabinet, Act MP and MP um, for Tamaki, the electorate of Tamaki, had cancelled regular meetings. Well, I wasn't surprised to hear she'd cancelled regular consultation meetings, I think monthly, with the Council of Trade Unions. But at the same time, she was cancelling her regular meetings with Business New Zealand, which is pretty well, I think, the biggest conglomerate of business lobby organisations representing businesses across New Zealand. And Brooke Van Velden's argument is, she said, look, uh, I take up so much time having these regular meetings, I want to get out and meet and talk to more people and more groups. So these regular slots, which previous ministers have had, are off. Um, what's going on here? Is the government closing the door or uh, ensuring it doesn't get lobbied? For a little bit more on the surprise move, we are joined now by the CEO of Business New Zealand and uh, regular platform appearer, Kirk Hope. Kirk, how are you, mate? Yeah, I'm great, Sean. How about yourself? Very well. So what did you do to piss off Brook <laughs> Van Velden? I think it's probably more of a reflection on mainstream media than the relationship that Business New Zealand has with the government and with Minister Van Velden, to be perfectly frank. I mean... I think um, a couple of things. One, a bit of a beat up story. Um, you'll see our perspective, which is actually it's absolutely right for ministers, particularly ministers that are new to government, uh, to be engaging with as wide a set of stakeholders within their portfolios as possible. And we don't have any God given right to dominate a minister's time. I mean, what I would say is that there are already a range of things that were within our manifesto uh, that we had advocated hard on behalf of, you know, business organisations around the country. Now, them. which portfolio yeah. are we talking about here? Business development? Workplace relations. Or workplace relations, of course. And they've yep. changed yep. the, uh, yep. they've done some favours to you in, in that regard. Okay. How often were you meeting with the previous Minister of Workplace Relations or what had been the setup? Yeah, we'd, we'd meet um, either monthly or every couple of months uh, to keep in touch because, of course, particularly in that workplace relations space, there was a lot going on. There was a, you know, they had to create a framework around uh, fair, so-called fair pay agreements, which, of course, we didn't like, but we, you know, we were trying to work with them to make it, see if it could at all be workable, which in the end, um, we found that it wasn't going to be. So there was also a lot, a lot of other areas like the Holidays Act, which has been a mess for a long period of time the previous government, to be credit, uh, wanted to open it up and have a look at it. This government has said we'll actually kind of fix it, so that's, that's good as well. All right. So you don't feel like you've lost too much, and I suppose in some ways the big policy changes that you guys wanted are already underway or, or have been achieved. Yeah, that's right. I mean, there's, there's probably a couple of other things that are sitting there, which I'm sure the government are, are preparing to, to figure out how to address, but, but they have been hot priorities for us. There are some issues relating to contractors, which uh, need to be clarified for for the benefit of you know platform businesses like Uber. Um, so that's the distinction between someone who's an employer, an employee or a contractor, that, that needs real clarification fast, that can shut businesses down. Um, and, and as I said before, the Holidays Act, which the government has agreed to, to fix as a priority, the government itself has a massive problem around the holidays mm -hmm. that where the calculations were um, not not able to be made in a way that you know, that people could be properly paid, and and so there's there's thousands of employers, including the government itself, that's affected by by that. Yeah, yeah. All right, and I see too. She's sort of closed the door on the CTU. You must be happy about that. Uh, well, look, I mean, it's really her decision and, and the way that she wants to deal with, with the CTU. One of the things that the previous government uh, had, the structure that they had was a tripartite structure, so you know, business, government and, and unions, and they like to run it that way. You know, this is a different regime, and they, and they will choose to, to run it in a different way, I guess. All right. Um, so you Probably don't see it as a snub, you don't see it as a degradation of the Atlas-influenced um, lobbying that the that Business New Zealand does. Of course, I'm saying that with my tongue in my cheek. Yeah, thanks for that, Sean. <laughs> no, look, I mean, my, my observation uh, would be we have a great relationship with the Minister. One of my staff was talking with her last evening. We have her at an event uh, for, for general, general council that we're running in, in a week's time. So, look, I, as I say, I think the story is a bit of a beat up, to be perfectly frank, with someone, someone with a lot of time on their hands and... Um, and making a bit of mischief. Yeah, okay. 
Um, uh, Kirk, I want to ask you uh, also in the in the context of this government, uh, when's your next big survey of business confidence and how they feel about things? Because we're past the 100 days, we're going to get a new 100-day plan. So excited. Um, <laughs> and this government seems to be settling in, if you like. Yeah, I mean, I think if you look at the last one, I think you'd expect probably a, a bit of a build on that. I mean, the, what I think what the last hundred day plan was about stopping stuff that you know that a lot of businesses weren't weren't really that in and of. The next stage, and I've already started a lot of uh, the work in the next stage, will be about you know laying the foundations for, for actually um, doing some practical stuff. Like you know, I think they had to draft. Um, DPS for transport out, so that tells you what the forward plan is there. The key thing will be to get, for them to get shovels in the ground. So, 100-day plans are good. I think they'll be focused on trying to trying to get some action underway as well.